Bienvenidos a Cuba. Bienvenidos a Cuba. Bienvenidos a Cuba y bienvenidos al Grand Prix. Welcome to Cuba and to its historic capital city, Havana. The cars, the architecture and way of life are a throwback to the 1950s and post-war Cuba. Havana's Sports City Coliseum hosted the country's first ever Judo Grand Prix. After a beautiful opening ceremony, IGF President Mr. Marius Visa awarded an IGF gold medal to members of the Cuban Olympic Committee and the Ministry of Sport. Mr. Visa then officially opened the historic event, which had a great participation. Havana is the first Grand Prix in the qualifying process for Rio 2016, and as such, there was a host of Olympic and world champions, as well as a strong Cuban contingent taking part. on expectantly, and at the draw, category after category, boasted a star-studded lineup. But one category in particular caught the eye. The under 90 kilograms, featuring a mouth-watering lineup. But we start at under 73 kilograms. One month ago in Baku, Mookie took his first IJF World Circuit gold, throwing Francis Urani to Ippon in the final. His favourite technique, so did Surakami Goshi. In Havana, he was looking good again, beating tough Russian Mogoshkov on his way to the final. There he found himself up against home crowd favourite Estrada. Could he make it two gold in a row? Muki, the man on form, the winner last month in Baku. He's going to be wearing blue. But this young man here, Estrada, had a great day, 19 years of age, and he's got the whole crowd behind him. But uh, Muki, a huge thrower. And Soli Surakami Goshi, his favourite technique. He does go, he does go, but uh, he's really getting better and better. He's going to make a major force. Oh, what's going to happen? Oh, oh it stretched him out there with the Sony. And now, Estrada has felt the danger. Muki looks very, very calm. Looking for the sleeve all the time. There's the Sony! That's what he was looking for. Beautiful. He was so cool, calm and collected. And look at that, he just says, that's what I expected. Sony Surakami Goshi and the young Estrada didn't have an answer. That was brilliant stuff. And that's his second win on the trot. And Oren Smadja, his coach, is going to be so happy about that. Look at that, he comes in, he's almost at the wrong angle, but he stretches them out and he readjusts the hips. The hips go in and he just pole drives him over onto his back. It was so, so clean and it looks so easy. He makes it look so easy and he's got to be a major threat at the World Championships in two months' time. Brilliant stuff from this young Israeli. It's a very special moment especially having the Israeli the highest. I'm really pleased to have won the title in Grand Slam and here in Havana, as it was really hot in the world ranking. Today is a great day. Presenting the medals for the under 66 kilogram category was tennis legend Ily Nastasi, and it was Russian Pulyev who had the honour of receiving gold. Earlier on, Mr Nastasi had joined IJF President Mr Marius Visa to witness a moment of unorthodox genius from Pulyev in the final. It was so bizarre that it caught the referee on the hop. But luckily, Judo employs a video referee system, and on reviewing the footage, it was clear that Pulliam had directed his opponent over onto his back and had controlled the landing onto the point of his shoulders. took their second gold medal in the heaviest men's weight category of over 100 kilograms. Standing at 6 foot 8, Sayadov is the tallest man on the world circuit. He used his long reach to keep out Great Britain's Sherrington in the final. When the time was right, Sayadov pounced and took
took Sherrington onto his back to secure the title. Cuba's bracer showed that the host nation's strength is not just in the women's weights, as a power to Grand Prix bronze. He defeated Georgia's Matthias Philly in his last contest to make sure the Cuban public went home with smiles on their faces. weight of over 78 kilograms, the gold medal was won by China's Ma, who was too strong for Germany's Knicks in the final. With a minute and a half to go, she put in the decisive attack. It was the only medal for the Chinese. The women's under 78 kilograms saw the return of the reigning Olympic and 2010 world champion, Kayla Harrison of the USA. Harrison has only been back in training for three months, but is now getting serious as she attempts to take her second world title. She blasted her way through the eliminations before coming up against 2011 world champion Francis Chimeo. The final was tight and tactical, with Harrison getting the better of the grits and the attacks. It was back to winning ways for her. I feel great, honestly. I was a little, I wasn't a little, I was a very, very nervous coming into the tournament just because there's still a lot of rust and uh, I have only been doing judo since March, really. So to come back in my first tournament win a gold was a big deal for me. And it's really, it's thanks to my coaches and my teammates because without them, I would not be as ready as I am. We have a couple more events, Russia, training camp in Spain, before coming back and starting our preparation for Worlds and going for that number one spot. Chimeo's teammates made a good impression in the under 63 kilograms, where both of their fighters made it to the final for a French domestic. Abbek Nanu, the world number one, overcame her compatriot, Bella, first thrown with a Puranagi, which scored Yuko, and then confirming victory with an unorthodox counterattack, that scored Wazari. Goal for Abbek Nanu. There was yet another French finalist at under 57 kilograms. Olympic bronze medalist Pavia found herself up against Austria's Filtz Moser. Who would come out on top? Well, both of these ladies have a good chance at the coming World Championships. It's Moser though, she's, well, 32 years of age, so this really is her last blast for Olympic qualification. Pavia. The winner, the last four times out between these two. There's a Haro Nakikomi straight in. And look at Fitzmoser there, trying to get her down to the ground. That's where she wants her. So Pavia, very, very tactical. As all the French are, she should keep taking her to the edge in order to attack. That's what she does. And almost, does she get a score? Yes, she does. Was Eric scored there? Haro Nakikomi, and it was on the edge again. Look how she comes up there. And the only difference is now she's got to attack just inside the area. So Pavia using the edge to her advantage. On the edge again. Now it's going to happen. Oh, she gets the hip on. It started in, went quite a way outside the area. But Pavia, well, it was almost, it was Uchimata. It was hand assisted and she had such good control of the upper part of the body. She got the rotation and Fitzmoser went onto her back. Look how far inside it started. Look how far outside it goes. As long as it starts inside, that's what counts. And Pavia now has to be one of the favorites, certainly for a medal at the coming World Championships. In the bronze medal contest, Cuba's Ojeda meant business. Was Ari down against Roper, she produced a brilliant moment to score with her. Hers and the crowd's reaction illustrated perfectly how special a sport judo is in Cuba.
The IGAF traveled to underprivileged areas all over the world to promote the unique values and principles of judo. Havana was the next stop. An IJF delegation visited the dojo in one of its suburbs to share ideas and teach some fun judo games. Okay, me gusta mucho el judo y estoy muy complacido con él. Judo is not just about elite competition. There is so much more to it. Today has been very important and I have had a lot of fun. La actividad hoy ha sido maravillosa. Es una experiencia nueva para nosotros. Eh, haber compartido con estos dos sensei que nos transmitieron eh, actividades que juegos fundamentalmente para los niños que esta edad es lo que más pudieron. Eh, la actividad de juego. Se pudo notar la alegría de ellos como disfrutaban de esta actividad. The Cuban women's team is one of the strongest in the world. Their head coach is the charismatic Ronaldo, who has helped produce World and Olympic champions over a 20-year period. Ronaldo leads a tight ship. The team train together, work together and support each other. Ronaldo's unique coaching style has gone down in judo folklore. Here in Havana, the women once again showed their strength in depth. 48 kilogram final was an all Cuban affair as the board got the better of Mestre Alvarez to take the gold medal. The Cuban flag was once again on show in the weight above as the former world champion Burma topped the podium. El judo femenino no sigue muchas personas en Cuba y siempre ha estado en la élite. Nosotros somos sus campeones olímpicos en Londres y sus campeonas mundiales en Brasil. Y entonces esto pone regocijo a todo el espectador que viene a ver a nuestras atletas y le siguen dando la confianza que merecen. La mujer cubana es muy luchadora, la mujer cubana tiene calidad, no solamente en el judo femenino, sino en otros deportes. Y como guerreras que son, ahí está su resultado. Este torneo tiene una gran importancia para Cuba, porque así podemos cuidar a muchas atletas nuevas que por la cuestión económica Cuba no puede llevarlas a desarrollarse. O sea que está, muchas de ellas han tenido nuestra primera experiencia internacional aquí. Y esto para nosotros es eh, un sueño logrado gracias a la Federación Internacional que le agradecemos de corazón el desarrollo y el apoyo que le ha dado al judo femenino cubano. At under 100 kilograms, it was young Belgian Nikiforov making waves. In his semi-final against Pasana, he produced one of the throws of the tournament, a huge Aranagi. Kick off. Nikiforov was through to the final. There he would face off against Orlik of Switzerland. Could Nikiforov claim a first Grand Prix gold? At under 70 kilograms, Germany's Vargas Koch couldn't keep the smile on her face. Having found herself in the final against Graf of Austria, she wasted no time going to work. Getting her arm over the top, she hooked in with her leg and drove Graf over onto her side for Yuko. Quickly freeing her trapped leg, she secured the hold down, holding Graf for 20 seconds to score. The second Grand Prix victory of the year for Vargas Koch, who cemented her position as world number two. There was 
Mornay was at in the lightest male weight of under 60 kilograms, where Kapinash Billy took gold. The win means the dynamic Georgian is now only 40 points behind world number one. In the final, he faced off against Kapinaki of Brazil. Typical fashion, he rode an attack and could catch his opponent. World number one at under 81 kilograms is another Georgian, Shrikisvili, who has been on excellent form this year. Shrikisvili is a big thrower, and after taking out Colombia's Castro, defeated Canada's Olympic medalist, Juanwa Fortier, in the semi-final. Shrikisvili produced one of the throws of the Grand Prix, as he feinted a big pickup before spinning his hips and turning in for a huge Uchimata. It was a great combination of raw power and beautiful technique. USA's world number five, Stevens, was looking good on the other side of the draw. But in his semi-final, he faced Penelva, the world number four. The fight was a classic, with both men locking horns in search of victory. Stevens tried to close out the contest, but Penelva counted him spectacularly. Wazari to the Brazilian so close to the hip-hop. Stevens came straight back at him, giving him no chance to dwell on his lead. Within seconds of conceding, Stevens swept Penalva off his feet and buried him for the hip -hop. A great example of judo's fine line between defeat and victory. The final would be Shrikishvili versus Stevens. The American exploded out of the blocks, laying the pressure on Shrikishvili early on. But the Georgian thrives on pressure, and he allowed Stevens to push forward, picking him off to perfection and scoring a Wazari. Stevens, however, was unrelenting, piling forwards and attacking the Georgian in standing judo and in groundwork. But time and again, Shrikisvili escaped just in time. One final attack from Stevens was countered by Shrikisvili, but just after the clock had expired. Victory to Shrikisvili. He confirms that he is clear favourite for World Championship gold. But Georgia weren't done yet. At under 90 kilograms, they'd saved their best to last as their talisman and judo poster boy Lipitiliani took to the tatami. Lipitiliani is the world number one and was here in Havana looking to cement his position at the top. He started almost too well, throwing his first opponent with so much power that he lost control halfway through. But once he'd found his rhythm, there was no stopping him and he eased into the semi-finals. However, Lipitiliani wasn't the only Georgian powerhouse competing in this category. His young teammate, Vinias Billy, has dreams of seeing his name on judo billboards. At the last Grand Prix in Samson, the 18-year-old sensation proved that he has what it takes to win gold as he unleashed a torrent of deadly judo on his opponents. It could well be him that flies the Georgian flag in the future. In Havana, Dabiniash Billy was just as impressive and took a major scalp when he chopped down the dangerous Voprasov before yet again displaying his ferocious strength to immobilize the Russian for the win at the semi-final showdown with Lepitiliani. It was the youngster who started strongest, but Lepitiliani almost counted him. Once again, Dabiniash Billy fired a warning shot. Now it was Lepitiliani's turn to threaten. Then it looked as though it was all over. But the referee had called Mate just before the attack. In the final minute, Lepitiliani showed his class, catching his teammate on edge with a leaf of foot swing to score a decisive goal. Vinicius Villis' day would surely come. Lepitiliani 
made the final. There it would be a Brazilian laying in wait for him, former world champion Camillo. Camillo is a class act and was looking to come back at his best with some boring sparring Ippon Judo, marking his path to the final. Could he roll back the years to derail the Georgian dynamo in Havana? Camillo versus Lipitiliani. Who would come out on top? This should be an absolutely amazing match. Camillo coming back after injury. And here's the man, world number one, Lipitiliani. And Mr. Marius Visa absolutely loving this matchup. Camillo left-handed. Lipitiliani holds right, but he can go both ways. Now what's going to happen? Is he going to get a score? Oh, yes, he is going to get a score. And Camillo, tried for the counter-attack, gets a counter himself. And that is a Wazari to Lipitiliani. It was, well, Surigoshi. And then Camillo tries to counter. And then he just carries it on Lipitiliani and plants him onto his back. And that was a rolling technique, so he gets a Wazari. Now Camillo comes forward. Always dangerous, a big thrower. Looking for the Uchi match around the Diatoshi. Oh, he gets tipped over. He gets tipped. And he's not going to be it. Oh, it's a, a Yuko scored. And it was a beautiful tipping action there from Lepitiliani. And he's well on top of this match. Camillo couldn't do anything about him. And now Lepitiliani well in charge of this final. The world number one wants to win the world title. 